Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So, as promised, today I am re I am doing a second video. Kind of a part two, but in a sense kind of not. If you if you checked out my first video from this morning, you do know that I was on my way to the dentist, getting ready to go to the dentist to get a temporary crown replacement put in. They did do that. So I am back to having a tooth now temporarily until they can get the new crown put in if you want to hear all about that mumbo jumbo and business go check out my other video that is there and also check out my community page there's a post about that as well but we are going to get into the video on what god says about abuse i've been wanting to do it it was a viewer requested video i've been wanting to do it for a while but i just have not been in the right mental and emotional stance to be able to do it i think effectively and the right way and i wanted to come in and do things right so that's where we're at right now um, I do have my Bible in front of me. I feel like if you are going to talk and quote anything about God and his stance on anything, I think the Bible is the thing that you need to have in front of you. It's literally our textbook of life. And literally, I, ha I just feel like it brings to more light and it also allows all you to um be able to open up your bibles if you do have one and to have the tools to dig in and read more about the abuse because there i'm just going to tell you there is the entire bible is filled with how god feels about abuse and um it talks about being oppressed in the Bible, they don't really use the word abuse because that wasn't really a word that was used back in the day. The you, the proper term for abuse is actually oppression. And you will see that all throughout the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Um, so to, just to let you know, I am reading from the King James Version. Um, I am a hardcore King James fan. I typically will not stray from any other variation versions of the Bible. I feel like these newer versions that are coming out are taking the context away and they're misinterpreting the original uh, interpretation. Um, and so that's just my stance on it. If you prefer other versions and variations, that's totally fine. I don't have any judgments for you whatsoever, but just for my own personal preference, I choose the um, King James Version. Uh, this is the King James Study bible so i do have a lot like there's it's more in depth and i really like this bible because one it was my grandmother's when she died i took i took on her bible but it also ha is a good study bible um it highlights different topics that you want to learn about and read about in the bible and everything so it's been very very helpful for me um with my healing journey with everything that's going on and just to be able to push out this video to you, it's been very, very helpful um, guiding me to the messages that need to get out. Um, so without further ado, we're going to get into it, what the Bible says about abuse and what God feels about abuse. Um, God hates. God hates abuse. Um, you see that predominantly throughout the entire Bible, multiple stories where abuse and opp oppression were going on and God hates it. And there's always been one correlating um, factor within those stories that all are the same. God never punishes the innocent. He never leaves the oppressed. And um, he's always with them. And very predominantly, he, like he says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And he does punish the wicked um but right now um we i'm gonna read some things from psalms that um talk about that um if you study the bible or have studied the bible you know that king david um he was a man after god's own heart but he suffered a lot 
he's known as one of the greats of the Bible, but he suffered massive amounts of oppression and pain throughout his life. Um, and the entire book of Psalms was while he was, was written while he was going through his oppression. Um, he was at war, um, with his son. He was, his son was trying to kill him. Um, there was just a, and he had a huge armies out trying to kill him. And I believe, and this is my own personal study and belief, is that each psalm that's written was basically King David's prayer to God while he was going through these oppressions and um, these struggles. Um, but the first one that I am going to read for you is Psalms 11. Um... It says, In the Lord I put my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may pri privately shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, how what can the righteous do? The Lord is in the holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. So just right there you hear that God puts his vengeance on the wicked, and he um, keeps the righteous safe. The Lord does not allow the wicked to continue going on and doing their wicked deeds. Now, whether it's an immediate um, fix or anything, God takes care of his children. Um, I also have somewhere else in Psalms that we want to go to. That was Psalms 11. Uh, if anybody wanted to know that. We're also going to read from Psalms 12. It um, goes along with um, what I just read here. It says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a do double heart do they, do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words of silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. So right here, this is talking about basically verbal and mental abuse. What God says about verbal and mental abuse when you use your tongue for wicked and you're destroying people with your mouths and uh, abusing them and oppressing them with your words. God, God hates it. He wants to rip your tongue right out of there and destroy it so you can't destroy other human beings, the innocent. It talks about that right here. Um, it talks about him um, protecting the innocent. And I'll, it also kind of talks about how the wicked seem to be able to walk away from everything and get away with everything. But that's not the truth because God will always seek vengeance on those people okay we're gonna jump to Psalms 56 and here I am just um, I'm just going to read some things because there's so much in the Bible that talks about this and I could go on and on and on but these are just things that stood out to me um, regarding a, abuse um, Psalms 55 it says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and I make noise. 
because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast in equity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far, far off and remain in the wilderness, Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof, mischief also and sorrow in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from their streets. For it was not an enemy that reapproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them, and let them go down and quake into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon I will, will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteousness to be moved. But there, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half of their days, but I will trust in thee. So this excerpt, Psalm 55, is clearly just talking about this person that came upon David and pretended to be their friend, his acquaintance. He knew of him, but he took advantage of David. David was not known to be a big guy. He was small and short in stature and that's why when he was a child and he defeated Goliath, he received a lot of backlash and emotional and mental abuse about that as well. Because everybody made fun of him. Nobody believed that he could do it. But he trusted in God. He put his faith in God. And the rest is history. We know the story of David and Goliath. You know, and after defeating Goliath, he still had people acting bigger than him and stronger than him and cowering over him and um, trying to take advantage of his size and stature and situation. And for me, in my situation, that's how it felt because I felt like I was David and he was Goliath. Um, he was using his size to overpower me and take advantage of the situation where I had no way out, you know, and it's kind of crazy how it talks about that, how that's that still happened to him. And then I love how it says, cast thy cares upon God for he careth for you. That's what we are to do when we are going through that. And I feel like as hard as it was, I had to, I had to, and I continue have to put my faith and trust in God that he is going, he's working in this situation between me and my kid's dad to just keep putting my burdens on him and he will take care of them for me. Um, again, if I didn't already say it, that was Psalms 55. Um, let's see what other things are talked about in the Bible. So in Deuteronomy, it talks about rape and the oppression against women and what God see, says about that. Um, let's go to Deuteronomy 22. If I can get there. It's been a minute. Okay, Deuteronomy 22.
And we're gonna go to 25 and 29 verses. Okay. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field, and he betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay unto her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty, fifty shekels of silver, and they shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. So, basically what's that saying is that if a man rapes a woman and forces himself on a woman, that woman will never ever be punished for that because that is not her fault. God doesn't see it as that woman committing a sin. And that clearly states that right here. So, for all of you who have been raped, for one, I apologize, um... I do understand where you're coming from because I have had sexual abuse done. Mine was just, I was already, I had kids with him already. So, um, but I don't feel like God, God has clearly shown that he hates abuse. He hates oppression and he hates rape. Um, and he does not punish he doesn't punish the person who was abused. He does not. He saves them from that. Um, let's go. I have so many things written down, but let's go to Proverbs. I have some stuff written down in Proverbs that uh, we can take a look at. Let's see. Proverbs 3 and 10. And I wrote down a whole bunch of... Um, scriptures i'm not sure if i'm going to read from all of them i just wanted to get like a good idea present a good idea of what god says and then you guys can do your own research if you are i'm called to do that okay let's Let's go to Proverbs 10, actually. The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures and wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dwelleth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in the harvest is a son that causes shame. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that per, per, perverteth his ways shall be known. He that winketh with the eye, ca eye causeth sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. The mouth of the righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up stripes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and the destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words that warneth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice as silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. 
The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. As vinegar to the teeth, and as smoke to the eyes, so is the slugger to them that sendeth him. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteousness shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the fraud tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous shall know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Again, that just is reiterating what God says about the wicked and the people who are oppressing the abusers. He hates them. He hates abuse. He hates the wicked. And the wicked will be punished for their iniquities, just like it was stated. They will be punished for their iniquities. Um, uh, as I was reading this, I was like, this is definitely talking about narcissistic person. The wicked is being referred to the narcissistic person with their tongue and their foolishness and their pride that whole entire excerpt of chapter 10 in proverbs was literally talking about that and what god says about that so now i'm going to get a couple of things from the new testament so we know ex we have examples of both like i said i'm not going to go and read everything that I had put because we'll be here for a long time if that's the case but we are going to get some examples so this is well in Luke Luke chapter 4 and Luke if you don't already know he was one of the 12 disciples I believe Luke was actually a doctor that's what his profession was and so it's very um you can always tell the difference between the um the disciples and their books of the Bible and how they wrote everything out by what their own profession was. And Luke, I believe, was a doctor. And you can definitely tell that in the way that he articulates and he writes everything in his um, books of the Bible. Or, or his, um, in his book of the Bible. So we're going to go chapter 4 in Luke, verse, starting with verse 18. And this is the words of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set liberty that to those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all of them were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all their witness and wondered in that gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself, whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Um, I was only supposed to read to 21, but that's okay but as you said as you heard the words of jesus he said that he is he has come to heal the brokenhearted to heal the bruised it is literally talked about throughout the entire bible that god and lord jesus is literally always always around the oppressed and helping the oppressed and defending the oppressed that's all of the bible talks about and um lastly i'm going to read something from revelation and then i'm going to get more in depth on specific things like specific stories that we are well known that god has um protected the innocent from um let's see we're going to go to revelation chapter 22 And let's see, chapter 22, verses 12 through 15. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according that his work shall be. 
I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates through the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and war whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the spirit and the bride say, Come and let him that heareth say, Come and let him that in a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of your Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that is literally the last verse of the Bible. How interesting that the last excerpt of the entire Bible talks about people who take words out of the Bible or misinterpret or and call it God, um, God's word and twist it around. How crazy that that is the last thing that is mentioned. Um, that just goes to show you that God is very serious about his... Um, the Bible and his words of wisdom and everything and he hates it he hates people standing up and um, at, there's an excerpt in the Bible that God spits people out who pretend to be Christians but literally are not or they make themselves look like Christians but they really are not he spits them out of their mouth he hates that it's called being lukewarm he hates that um, but I'm just going to now give examples um, for you of like different things and stories that we know of about abuse that God was there, has proven his love that he was there. Um, so first one we're going to talk about Cain and Abel, the story of Cain and Abel. Cain hated his brother so much that he picked up a, a stone and killed his brother. He was so jealous and killed his brother. Abel did not survive that, but Abel was the lucky one because he got to go straight to heaven. Cain was severely punished for what he did. He was banished, and throughout the biblical history, you know, they were actually called Canaanites. Or you'll hear um, the, part, the um, tribes of Cain are very well much talked about in the um, Old Testament about the beasts roaming the earth. There's a theory out there that the beasts that were roaming the earth were actually um, derived from the tribes of Cain. Um, so Cain was severely punished and all of his ancestors were severely punished for his wrongdoing of uh, committing murder and killing his brother, um, which obviously is a form of abuse. Any, any kind of sign of oppression is abuse. Um, another story that is well known about that is Joseph. Um, he was hated by his brothers. They hated him. He was technically the favorite son. But his brothers hated him, sold him into slavery. He was abused um, and oppressed. Um, but God was with him throughout that entire time. And he promoted him um, up to the second to the king, second to the pharaoh. And Joseph actually ended up um, having to help out his family and his brothers. And Joseph could have turned the other cheek. He could have... Um, decided you know what I'm not going to help you out but you know God healed him from that abuse he healed his heart and Joseph uh, was able to help out his brothers regardless of what they did to him and it just goes to show you that when you yes you are allowed to feel the pain you're allowed to feel the anger of 
the oppression that was done to you, the abuse that was done to you. But if you leave it in God's hands, he will bless you and glorify you and exalt you while he's punishing the others. And sometimes he does it in an ironic way where you end up getting promoted and being so successful. And then those people that were oppressing you now have to come to you um, for help. And it's your choice if you want to help them out or not. I'm not going to get into whether or not you should or should not. That's to your to each your own and what you feel like God wants you to do. And if you don't believe in God, then um, kind of counterproductive to even be watching this video, I guess. But um, I appreciate that you are regardless. Um but another story, I mean, a well-known story, Noah. Noah incurred uh, mental and emotional abuse. Uh, everybody thought that he was crazy um, because he was talking about the flood that was going to happen. Nobody believed him. He warned everybody what was going to happen, but everybody thought he was crazy. So he incurred mental and emotional abuse from it and was basically known as the crazy within the um, the land. But guess what? He wasn't crazy. God was with him and his family. And everyone else suffered and um, died in the flood. Um, but Noah, he protected Noah and his family for his faithfulness. And then, of course, we got the story of David and Goliath. Um, where David was always considered... Um, he was mentally and emotionally abused by his brothers, by everyone around that. He was too small, too tiny. He couldn't defeat these people. He wasn't strong enough. Um, but you know what? God used him. And David put his faith in God that God would be protecting him and give him the strength and the courage to be able to defeat that giant. And he did. And throughout David's life, like we talked about earlier... He was oppressed a lot. There was people out to kill him. Some of them being his own son. You know, he was at war. Um, but God stayed with him throughout the entire time. And he put his faith and his trust in God that God would protect him. And God did. And um, then you have the story of Daniel in the lion's den. You know, Daniel was mentally and emotionally abused. Um, laughed at. And then thrown into the lion's den. If that's not abuse, I don't know what is being thrown into the lion's den. That is definitely abuse. But guess what? God was with him throughout that entire thing. And protected him through the um, from the lions in the lion's den from being killed. And in fact, um, he was able to work on the king's heart. And the king told Daniel to get out of there. And he was released. It's always ironic how... Your oppressor is usually humbled. God usually humbles the oppressor and they end up coming to you uh, for whatever it is that they're needing. And it's our choice to be able to decide if we're still going to hang on to that anger and get or give it to God and allow God to um, work his magic with these people. Now, I'm not saying that you have to forgive them. I'm just saying what God says. And I know it's very, very hard. I'm still working on it myself. Um, I still am. And, you know, the biggest story about abuse in the Bible is what happened to Jesus. You know, I, I think about it all the time where I'm like, what did I do to deserve this? And you know what? Damn, nothing. But you know what? Jesus didn't deserve to be brutally whipped and beaten. He lived a perfect and um, a perfect life he did not sin one time but yet he had the most horrific murder death that in all of earth's history everybody knows the worst and most painful death that was ever experienced was the death of Jesus Christ um, but yet he was a perfect human being and did nothing to deserve that or warrant that. Um, and God was with him throughout that all, whole thing. There was a couple of times where you could tell that Jesus was scared of what was going to happen. Um, in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was actually taken away and held prisoner, 
he was praying to God and he prayed so hard that blood was literally coming out of his um, forehead. He literally was crying tears of blood, sweating blood and tears, crying to God, um, crying out to God about his fears about everything, but putting his trust in God the Father, that God um, had a plan in mind and that everything was going to work out. And of course it did. Jesus died on the cross for all of us. He went and lived a blameless life, but a terrible, terrible, painful death just to show us that, you know, we are not alone in our abuse, all the abuse that was done to us. Jesus took upon the cross when he died. And, um, it just gives me, it just gives me, um, faith to know that, you know, God, no matter how hard the situation is, that God is always there. Um, with me protecting me um, I'm out of the situation now um, that I suffered in for 12 years um, and if you've watched my videos you've heard my story of how that all transpired and took place and how I got out of that and I do believe that that was God who got me out of there you know and um, I do believe that he hates abuse and he says it. He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He will get vengeance on those abusers and the people because he hates, he hates abuse. He hates being a, oppression. We clearly have shown, I've clearly shown that, um, multiple different excerpts from in the Bible that talk about that. Um, and he, he may not punish those people the abusers, the oppressors, he may not punish, punish them immediately, but God will get his vengeance on, um, the innocent and he has to protect the innocent because he does not punish the innocent. He had to get me and my kids away from their father. Um, and then his, um, I believe that God is going to punish him. Um, once we are away from him completely, uh, his punishments are not going to affect me anymore. And that's why in the long term of scheme of things, uh, the short scheme of things that it, it's like, Oh, well he continues to get to do whatever he wants and nothing's going to happen. But no, I was too close to the situation for God to punish him for his actions. But now that I am far apart and I'm not too, as tied to the situation as I was before, I do believe that God is going to um, do what he needs to do about the situation. And whatever that is, that's up to God. And um, I'm just going to put my faith and trust in him that God knows exactly what he's doing and his plan. Um, this is definitely the very first time I've ever done a video like this. Um, I've never even taught a Sunday school class for kids at church before. So this is like literally the very first time that I've ever done this. I have taken apart and bought Bible studies, but I've never ran it and I've never like um, gone through that entire process. So this is definitely a first for me, but I really actually enjoyed this because it's opened up my want to want to dig deeper in what the Bible talks about abuse. That was just scratching the surface. There is so much more in depth to talk about when it comes to abuse and the Bible and what God feels about it. And But there's just one correlating message about all of it. He hates it. He does not punish the innocent. And God does seek his vengeance on the wicked they will be punished for the wrongdoings. They might not be punished here on this earth, but when they die, they will be punished in hell. Um, it's just a matter of what God decides he's going to do with them. Oh, but if this is the first time you're tuning in and you liked what you saw, welcome. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell button so you don't miss a future upload. Um, again, I did not get my Ipsy um, BoxyCharm makeup unboxing box today in the mail, so I will be pu pushing out another video sometime this month. Hopefully, God willing, that everything goes okay. Um, so I will be doing that, and again, 
I did get the tooth fixed. I go in on the 30th to have my um, permanent tooth and crown put in. Um, so I will be having that done. So this is just a temporary. Hopefully this one lasts the last time I had this done. The temporary didn't last the full entire time while I waited for my crown. So again, I was like without a tooth for like a brief amount of time. But hopefully I won't have the problems that I had before. And I'll be able to eat food and not feel like my tooth's gonna fall out or crack off again <laughs> but anyways I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week today is Wednesday so we're just right in the middle of the week so happy Wednesday I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening and you all have a good night bye